Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, with an old wartime colleague, Snowy White, is on holiday at Grandley, a small village on the Devonshire coast. You know, Snowy, whoever called this a golf ball tonight had his teeth. I don't know why you play the game, honest, I don't know. Well, there's something about the game that gets you. Not on this course, though. There's your ball, in that reach. Hell, it's unplayable. And this is supposed to be the fairway. I shall pick it up, Snowy, drop it over my left shoulder and play it as though nothing had happened, without forfeiting a stroke. You can pick it up and take it home for me, sir. You know, Snowy, you must drop this sir business. We're not Captain and Sergeant now. Sorry, sir. Uh-uh. <laughs> I can't get used to calling you nothing else. Not now, not after six years. Oh, ah, well. There. Well, where's the ball gone now? <laughs> over your left shoulder and down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are. Now, have another go. Yeah, better still, look, you turn your back and I'll place it for you. Comes to the same thing and it saves a lot of time. There. <clears throat> now, give it a bash. Ah, that's better. Now, where's the green? Now then, pass me my brassy. Mm -hmm. No, not that, that one there. Thanks. My favourite club, brassy. Now, watch this. I'm watching. Sure, love a duck. What a slice. Where's it going to finish? Well, in that quarry, by the looks of things. Yes. <laughs> Reckon you've just about had that one, sir. No fear. I've already lost two balls on this apology for a course. We're going to find that one if we have to climb the entire Devonshire coastline for it. Come on. <sighs> oh, well. We're out in the fresh air, I suppose. Tell me, Snowy, we haven't had much chance to speak to you since you got down here last night. How are you settling down? I'm not. I tried four jobs since we was demobbed and can't somehow seem to settle down to any of them. What are you working at now? I'm not. I had a slight difference of opinion with the foreman last Wednesday. We had words. So you're out of a job? That's right, sir. Your suggestion that I should come and spend a few days' holiday with you down here grandly just came at the right time. Good. And what about yourself, sir? Well, I'd saved quite a bit of money and I thought I'd just please myself and enjoy life for a time, so I did. And what about your old job? Well, I was with the International Construction Corporation just before the war, and they were prepared to wait until I was ready to come back, but it's a desk job in London. I should go scatty now. But I've been thinking, you and I might start up together in business, a garage or something. That's what I really wanted to get you down here for. Well, I'm going for having a bash at anything with you, sir. You know that. The Barton Wide Garage is limited. Sounds well, doesn't it? Not bad. But don't let's stop down here for heaven's sake. Let's start up somewhere where there's some houses and a few bright lights. Oh, oh too much fresh air down here. It isn't healthy. Now, I'd rather be up in that plane. A bit of excitement. Me too, Snowy. In the meantime, here's the quarry or whatever it is, but where's my golf ball? Love a duck, sir. Like looking for a needle in a perishing haystack. <laughs> Queer-looking place, this, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like some kind of disused mine working. Uh, what? Right by the sea? Well, that's what it looks like. Let's climb down, see if there's any sign of that ball. Right. Weird-looking place, isn't it? Oh, it gives you the creep somehow. Look at that blooming great hole. Oh, here, in the side of that cliff. You don't call them holes, man. It's a cave. Yeah, well, if there was 50 golf balls here, you wouldn't be able to find them. It's too dark. Come on, let's have a look round. Follow my track. It's a bit tricky. Yeah. You got a torch? Now, do I look as though I've got a torch? I came out to play golf. Now, what I mean is, you won't be able to see very much inside there without one. Yeah, what was that? Hmm? What? Well, I thought I, I heard a sort of echoey noise from this cave. Imagination. No, I don't think so. I think... Uh... Just a minute, Snowy. Listen. There's somebody running out of the cave. Well, he's got a torch. I can see it bobbing about. Here it comes. All right, all right, old chap, hang on. What's the trouble? Oh, dear, what a frightful thing to have happened, poor Desmond. What's the matter? Hang on a minute, chum, get your breath back. I'm Professor Earnshaw, my friend Desmond and I were searching for fossils when he slipped and cut his head terribly badly, oh, terribly badly. The blood made me feel quite faint. What have you done, left him to bleed to death? No, 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 I've staunched the blood as best I could. I'm going for help quickly. He's quite conscious. If I can get a car or an ambulance, would you please go in and help him? Of course. You go along with the professor, Snowy. No, 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 really, no. A better idea, if you don't mind my saying so, would be if you could carry my friend to the entrance of the cave. He's a big man. It'll take the two of you while I hurry for help. Oh, that's sense, anyway. <laughs> Come on in with me, Snowy. Right, sir. Uh, you carry on, Professor. <laughs> yes, yes, Don't work. Lend us your torch, will you? Oh, uh, uh, yes, of course. There you are. Thank you so much. You'll find him about a hundred yards into the cave. I'll hurry along now. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor Desmond. Come on, Poor Snowy. Desmond. See you later, Professor. Queer old bird. Yes. Humbug, Hatton, Macintosh. Yeah. Not sort of get up to go fossil hunting in. 
damn dark in this cave. And it twists and turns. Hey. Hello? Desmond? Where are you? Okay, old boy. Coming, coming. There's his torch. Look, down there. We'll be with you in a jiffy, old chap. This iron door. Iron door? Oh, yes. This is a sort of strong room. Who is it? Someone to give you a hand, old man. Don't worry. Did you, did you get that swine? Eh? Swine? Who? That man. Didn't see his face. Got a black Homburg hat on the Macintosh. Saw that. Oh, your friend the professor. Yes, we saw him. No friend of mine. He's just stabbed me on the side. What? what? The... Shine the torch. What? Good God. Love a duck, sir. That's a nasty do. Look, Snowy, you look after this chappy as best you can. I'll get on after the professor. Oh, just a minute. I know your voice. Come back here. Let's take a look at you. Why? What is it? Yes, aren't you Barton? You were in 20 Commander once. That's right. Uh, Why, you're low, Jimmy. Low, aren't you? You were in military intelligence. Excuse me, sir. This chap's in a bad way, whoever he is. We want an ambulance. And I don't think that their professor's gone for one. Yes, okay, Snowy. Would you mind dashing off any conveyance you can get hold of? Anything. With some assistance. A couple of strong men. Yes, sir. Uh, sure you'll be all right, sir. Yes, but you keep a sharp lookout for that professor, Bird. I will, sir. Back as quick as I can. Good man. Here, take my torch. Hurry. You betcha. Won't be long. Now then, let's take another look at you, old man. Look, Barton. You see that huge iron door there? Yes, this is a sort of strong room. But don't talk, old son. Keep quiet while I try and staunch the blood. Well, that fellow knew where to stab. And how? Now, now, listen to me, Barton. You must listen. But first, shine the torch all around this place. Mm. It's gone all right. What's gone? I'll tell you in a minute. There's not much time, and you must help. Of course I'll help. You know that. Good. Now then, I'm working for the War House, MO13. We had a secret weapon. Top secret. We had a beauty. A real horror of a weapon, Barton. No kidding. A real horror. We uh, hid it in this strong arm, cut into the rock, until it could be handed over to the United Nations, you see? I see, yes. The guards here were doubled recently because the date of handing over the weapon was drawing near. My boss, Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, had a hunt somebody might try to get hold of the thing. So he sent me down to check up. When I got here, no guards. Nobody here. I got as far as the iron door. It was open. And someone knifed me on the side. What do you want me to do? I'm losing blood fast. You must get away quickly to London. See Colonel Gardner, war office. Tell him what you know. I've had it, Barton. Look, where's the torch? Let's see if I can get you out of this place and into the open air. Barton, look! The door! The iron door, it's moving! Hey, what? What do you say? What the... No, don't let it shut, Barton! Don't let it shut! Hell, how do we get out now? We don't, Barton. There's a self-locking door. It only opens from outside. Oh, phew. What a nasty mess to be in. Still, so Snowy White won't be too long away, I hope. Unless... Yes, unless. I'm afraid, Barton, that your friend Snowy White has probably stopped to pack it. That fellow wouldn't let him go for help. Well, that's that, then. Oh, sorry about this. Oh, forget it. Hello, hmm? what was that? What? Huh? thought I heard something. Listen, I think our friend's come back. Yes, listen, somebody's trying to open the door. Wait till he comes right into the room, right up to us. I'll give him Professor. I'll bash his Homburg hat over his eyes. Hello? Jimmy? Jimmy Lowe, are you in there? Why? What the... That's Colonel Gardner, my boss, head of MO13. What's happened? Who are you? No, don't move, my friend. I've got a pistol in my hand. Are you Colonel Gardner? Who the devil are you? It's all right, Chief. Captain Barton, later 20 Commander. Just the man you want. We're wasting time. Have you got a car? Yes. Then the sooner we get Jimmy Lowe to hospital, the better. He's been stabbed in the side. Who did it? Do you know? Tall fellow in a black Homburg hat and a brown Macintosh. Not a shortish, stocky fellow. Ruddy complexion in flannels. It's my pal, Snowy White. We sent him for an ambulance or something. Well, I'm afraid he didn't get very far. I found him lying on his face at the entrance to this cave. Somebody's given him one hell of a slosh on the back of his head. You don't mean he's... Good Lord, no. Just out for the count. He'll be as right as rain tomorrow. My men are putting him in the car now to go to the nearest hospital. And that's where we'll send low. Corporal! Sir! And two or three of you men, lift him carefully. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Uh, Come on. Uh, right. You, you take his legs. Oh, I'll take uh, this in. 
Sorry, Chief. I am no. All right, old chap. Soon have you comfortable again. Nearest hospital, Corporal, quick as you can. Yes, yes sir, right. My name you go. Careful. Listen now. Barton, isn't it? That's right. Dick Barton. Lowe said you're just the man I want. Twenty commando, didn't he say? Captain? Yes, Snowy White out there was a sergeant with me. Married? No, neither of us. Any ties, work or anything? No, and not over eager to settle down to a humdrum existence. Only talking about it earlier on, strangely enough. Hmm. Might be able to use you two, Barton. Don't mind a lot of danger, plenty of hard graft, and possibly a knife in the back at the end of it all, with no flowers and no public funeral. Interested? You make it sound extraordinarily attractive. No torture in it at all, I suppose. <laughs> I wouldn't even say no to that. Anyway, if you're interested, pack some things and come straight up to London with me. Your sergeant pal can follow up as soon as he feels fit enough. Is it on? You bet it's on. Thank you, Miss Hunter. You've got all that? Yes, Colonel Gardner. Well, now, Barton, you've met my personal assistant, Jean Hunter. We've not been introduced. Well, that'll come later. This is urgent. You've heard what Sir Archie Wrangle's just been telling us, that not only have they pinched the secret weapon, but they've also kidnapped the scientist who worked on it with Sir Archie. I can hardly believe that my colleague, James Thurgood, would have joined Wilhelm Kramer of his own free will. Wilhelm Kramer? Mm, head of the gang. Oh. And he means to hold the civilized world to ransom with this weapon. Ah, yes. But he can't. Oh? And why not, Sir Archie? Quite simply because I hold the formula for the protective antidote, which must be worn by the operators of this weapon. It was my invention, Excuse you see, me, and... sir, but uh, may I make a suggestion? Of course. Go ahead, Miss Hunter. If all Kramer needs is the formula for the antidote, he'll stop at nothing to lay his hands on Sir Archie's papers. Hadn't we better have them here, sir, under lock and key? Of course we should. Have you got the papers with you, Sir Archie? No. No, they're in the pocket of another suit at home. But Miss Hunter is quite right. They should be here. I'll go and fetch them at once. My car's outside, and I should be back here again within the half hour. Hold on, Sir Archie. Found the man, he's off like a shot rabbit. I'll take the lift. It's quicker. Ah, yes, and it's waiting on this floor. That lift wasn't working. Perfectly all right, Miss Hunter, when I used it an hour ago. I shan't be long. Oh, oh great heavens. Look, Barton. There's no floor in it. <laughs> Has Wilhelm Kramer set this trap? Will he get the vital papers? Can he work the secret weapon? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent. Dick Barton, Special Agent.